Um, PCAC and the councils have agreed um, to call on and for is a 40-day minimum comment period um, to allow the public to uh, to weigh in. There's a there's an email address on the MTA's website. If you go into the news button and then click the transformation report, um, it's not anywhere prominently displayed. We've been putting it out there. So you're going to mention that in your remarks next week when yes. you speak at the you yes. speak at all three. Um, I mean at Metro North Area and. Uh, and transit. I would like board. to, if you have no objection no. to that no. conversation of Metro no, North. We're, 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 we're out here representing riders. We need yeah. to do stuff that's, that's for the riders and not okay. for the board. And we will um, pursue that with Long Island Railroad Commuter Council. Okay. Um, they're on board with the 45 day comment period, but. Well, not 40, 45. 45. This is really a standard, it's either 45 or 60. Whatever, whatever. Um, or looking more closely into the FTA requirements. Now, they, they, and the MTA's own public, part, public participation plan, which was developed in 1997. And you have the only copy. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably literally. So we've actually thanks shared it with thanks the Yeah, Carol. thanks to Carol. Exactly. Um, yeah, so we've shared that with the MTA's. Office of External Affairs. Maxwell. With Max Maxwell Young. Small. And he, yes, and he has just hired a deputy, somebody who's a, a long time news reporter, yes, Tim Minton. Yeah, from Channel 7. Yeah. Oh. I was, was, was he there at your briefing? No. Yeah. Maxwell was there. Yeah. So um, that's the approach we're taking. We're going to be calling for public forums and meetings. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that yesterday that was a question that came up. And uh, there was no commitment to a public hearing, but public forums were possible. And we have offered to work with the MTA to not only develop a more up-to-date I mean, public participation plan, but to uh, uh, sponsor a whole support these public come. And that's that falls within our mandate. It does fall within our Exactly. Hi. Oh, ah, perfect timing. Hi. Did you get lost? Yeah. Hmm? We lost? No, we just got done. No. So this that actually segues nicely into okay, the conversation yeah. that right. we had. So we um, went to meet with Metro North to talk about Freedom Ticket and next steps um, in bringing that to, to the Bronx and Metro North ones in the Bronx. That'd be a good idea. Yes. We, we, uh, we, well, we would have had the conversation if we yeah. hadn't had the conversation. Um, they, uh, I guess the, the, you know, there's a bunch of things that are being thrown in the mix that are not necessarily from an operational perspective, but from a political planning, uh, planning, from a political um, perspective in terms of fair policy, which, of course, can only be adopted by the board, theoretically. Um, the Outer Borough Transit Fund, which we've talked about before, which was an outcropping of the first stage of the congestion pricing plan, uh, sets aside $50 million for transit for other, for people in other boroughs. How much? $50 million. Fifty million. Right. Um, and so that's, you know, outside of Manhattan, essentially. And the only thing we've seen to date on it in any kind of writing is a press release announcing it. Um, they came out in April, right after the budget was adopted by the Assemblywoman from Bayside. Um, I was at an event with her last week and had hoped that she would elaborate on it, but she had to leave. So I'm <laughs> reaching out to her for, an, uh, for a meeting with her staff for herself. Um, so because of that fair policy consideration, um, because of apparently other proposals that are floating around out there, by out there, I mean out there in the political world about how to how to um, tap into that money. Well, not just to tap into that money, but to um, improve accessibility and reduce cost to um, people who live within city limits, you know, uh, near Metro North stations. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that by far the most thoughtful uh, proposals have come mm -hmm. from. Bradley and Ellen and Sheila and, and primarily you guys who have worked on um, putting together uh, a look at the ridership uh, and and not just 
the initial proposal in the Bronx, as it was citywide, was 0.8 miles away from the subway station. But we, after meeting with the Bronx Borough President, have a good understanding that their concerns are also the topography of the Bronx, because it actually has topography, as, um, as Mike said today, uh, that uh, changes. Um, it, it's not as a crow flies, 0.8 miles necessarily could be up and down to you know, three or four steep hills. So those are all considerations, but, and I had to leave, but it sounded as though the time frame was still a little issue. And that ideally things would wait until Penn Access following East Side Access, following East River uh, <laughs> Tunnel reconstruction or rehab. But what, does that have, what does East River Tunnel have to do with Because that will have something to do with Penn Access. However, I think that none of us think it has to wait that long. No. I don't know. So, so um, what it seemed more like is that the number of proposals they're looking at is, is a lot. That, that they acknowledge Freedom Ticket. Then there is this outer borough fund, which may do a, a city discount that's at 10 or 20 percent across everything. For monthly tickets. For monthly tickets. Um, then there's, you know, other politicians that want to do metro card uh, costs for it. But it sounded as though there are a, 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 at least a couple or more, th in addition to those, that we didn't have, we, we don't have light on at all to know what what it is, and so that they've been, you know, there's a where freedom ticket falls in this. While it's it's the most sensible because it it it, it, it um, takes capacity in mind. It's fact based. Realistic. It's fact based. But I think what came out of this meeting was how capacity constrained Metro North is, and they've never been good at articulating that. They've always said it, it with regard to why they have to go into Long Island, but some of the discussion today was really enlightening, I think. Why they have to go in Long Island? What do you mean? Pen Access. Well, uh, uh, pen access to, to go in there. Um, and I feel like they really asked, basically, what they need more people like us. Mm -hmm. It's something I think that, I don't know, I think this council could do is really to help articulate and get out there that they need they need more yards, they need more rolling stock, they need these things and their yards are to yeah. that themselves. Oh, make sure north. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that know. how short their platforms are in the Bronx is a, a big constraint. Oh, yeah. um, well, they keep talking about it because they can only unload four cars on, on a train. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they were talking about uh, Tremont. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Tremont, Tremont was... and Melrose is a really big issue because two of the cars or whatever don't platform, so right. one has to be in the front cars, mm -hmm. and that makes it difficult how passengers load and mm -hmm. get off the trains, mm -hmm. and doing something like this would, make, would be problematic. So understanding what's made it into the 20-year needs assessment, because freedom ticket, and it, it, it all ends up sort of overlapping on each other, and it does sound like never, not everything is even making it into possibly the 20-year needs assessment. Oh my God. Um, and so, and, and there, what, there is this thing that another rallying cry is the, the um, inequity of Long Island Railroad getting 55% of the capital and, and Metro North getting 45 And it really sounds, to me, the past capital programs haven't felt like Metro North was under a tremendous financial burden of what they needed to do. Now that they have to do the train shed with Grand Central and they are feeling the, the, that they're busting out of their yards and even expanding the current ones are really hard, um, let alone citing a new one. Um, all of these things, it feels as though they're, they're feeling the heat now and they could really have a rallying cry around making that a 50-50 split. At least, I mean, it's been so so lopsided for so it's many years. So and they thought that and when... There were really good projects, but it's yeah. been lopsided. They, but they thought that, because, you know, from Donna Evans, once they caught up in ridership, that then it would start to be, they'd start giving a little more even, and, and they haven't done that. So... They have equal ridership? Mm. I, right now, Long I think Island Long Island more, right? went ahead again. Yeah, so, it's, it's always a... Yeah, it's a back and forth. So the first time... Metro services. Hmm? Depends on how no. services. 
Yeah. But yeah, so the first time Metro North met Long Island's ridership, which was like 2010 or something, there was this huge feeling for Metro North that, oh my gosh, we're finally going to get equal pay. But that's yeah. because of the New Haven line, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that because? That's the heaviest ridership. Yeah. yeah. But either way, they have financial capital needs that have to get addressed. And again, if you are addressing the economic value of that as an investment, mm -hmm. they're critical things, which is the Bronx and all sorts of investment needs. But well, I know that Randy had a, a briefing on the capital plan and 20 year needs. Yeah, it's the switches, it's yeah. the tracks, it's the switches, it's the tracks, it's the stopped. contact rail, it's the contact rail, the mm -hmm. old contact rail from 100 years ago. And we need to beef it up. I mean, it's it's like very intense. Um, and then, then it's dark, right? Well, yeah, the, the, the M9s that were supposed to be ordered were deferred so they could buy dual, dual mode locomotives, which RFP, okay. the RFP should supposed to be coming out sometime this fall. I don't know why it takes so long to do it. Right. That's an excellent question. The other thing which was brought up is with, would Amtrak go in with them also because they have a critical need to replace their dual mode locomotives. No, we're all comparable in age. They are. And then he, and the we same have, manufacturer. Right. Oh, it makes sense. It's economies of scale. Mike went down the path um, that Bradley brought up of, yeah, what happened to Hudson Line going into Penn. And he went into, uh, oh my gosh, the complications of that. So it's they not don't, off the table, it's just... Yeah, because the, it goes into the southern tracks, one through eight, which doesn't have the platform capacity. So that gets into that whole project that's like taking out the southern block. <laughs> You know, and because plus they have a capacity. different third rail. And they don't have the power. And there's no third rail on the, on the Hudson line. Yeah. And say these uh, CP12, and it's and it, when they get into the tunnel, then they have the, well, that, that's And it's a single place. track tunnel, so they said that's another constraint. That and Amtrak yeah. increasing service by what, 30%? 30%, mm -hmm. 30 yeah. Well, no, that's well, on the New Haven that's line, so that's coming line. in. Yeah. That used to be yeah, the that's plan. Yeah, that's the future 10 the 30 year plan that, that yeah. worked on it when I was successful. But it did say that they were sitting at the table with Amtrak, at least on that project, on that effort. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this can't be done right now, but there's absolutely no reason why it can't be done right now. Right. And, mm -hmm. Well, and then one thing that one of the guys pointed out, which I think was really great, is I did that accounts for into GCT. Mm -hmm. and should be really looking at the counts into 125th Street because so many people get mm -hmm. off at 125th mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to recalculate the numbers mm -hmm. to see what the capacity looks like when you look at it through that lens. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's... On and off at 125th yeah. Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which they said... There's not supposed the to be any odds, but right. occasionally you see right. these people... Oh, there's so always people getting I think on at 120 that, That's a huge station. And I think that there's a lot of obstacles in for freedom ticket implementation at Metro North because of what we just learned. But I think that once we're able to look at these numbers and refigure some things and get some more information from them, that I think that we'll be able to come up with something that's doable, but it, it's mm -hmm. going to take some brain So well. I, I just yeah. like, went out off the top of my head. So Riverdale's two, Spike and I was two, rather, new um, Marble Hill, University Heights, and Morris Heights is Five stations on the Hudson line. Yeah. What's and happening? Oh, no, I'm just okay. counting how many Down stations. Down the Bronx stand. And then on uh, the Harlem, it's Woodlawn, Botanical Gardens, Fordham, Tremont, Bellows. Oh, no, I have it. I can go get it. Mm -hmm. it's the, oh. So it's 10 stations. How many I mean, would, would, are we looking for to be offered at each of those stations? Well, that's, that's the approach they seem to be taking. Well, we no, I think. On the Hudson line is the most viable because you don't have the capacity on the Harlem line. And then the, they like the 0.8 miles from this station. You, you do have a public policy then that this is, the purpose of it is to not compete with the subway, but there are places in the Bronx that don't have rail. You know, Marble Hill is right there, so that's, that's, right, that, so that's that, out. So however, I thought there was no. three. So however, when we met with the borough president's office, they said there's absolutely no way that they could support Riverdale, Spike and Dival, and um, Riverdale and Spike and Dival, and not support Melrose and um, the, Melrose uh, Heights. Yes, yeah. um, that, that you know that you can't just give discounts to the 
a higher oh, I forgot income. Bridge. I left Williamsbridge. Community, so. So there's 11 stations. So they, so they, the borough president wants all stations. Well, he wants yeah. it to be a different um, measure instead of 0.8 miles necessarily as the crow flies up and down hills, um, particularly looking east because of the topography and, and the hilliness. That say um, you're looking at Melrose, so maybe that's just on the edge of 0.8 miles. But if you look at it from the other side, it's there's a oh, lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm oh, sure. Right. So looking east, east of the station, so for sure. So that sort of changes it a little bit. Um, and and I think four. that the political will is really going to be what drives it, honestly. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we can talk about practicality numbers and thorough research. You could, you know, put in like a dotted line to show the four stations that they're planning to put in right. for the pen access. Yeah. You know, the yeah, that line. would be good. Yeah, I mean, this so, was just current writership. So what um, what they um, did say that they're, you know, considering, and it's Thank a you. number of years away from, we'll, we'll get a copy of that mm -hmm. to you, okay. um, is that they would, cons one of the things they're talking about now, and everything is subject to change because everything is subject to change, mm -hmm. right? Um, but having a, a, a zonal structure in that would be consistent um, as it is now across everywhere with the new station. So it wouldn't be the price of a metro card, which is not something that we've, that we've called for, but um, wouldn't necessarily be the fare structure that has been proposed under freedom ticket model. So it, it, there's still a lot. Um, sure. You know, there really is the political aspect of this. Um, and I think the borough president uh, Ruben Diaz in the Bronx is very interested in seeing it implemented. Um, as well as Chuck Merlo. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that is, in order to get him behind the same proposal that we are making, that you know there has to be some more um, study. Well, more study or closer collaboration to get to the same page. Right. Thank you. So we'll you know. Uh, don't know when it's going to happen, but it, it could happen soon. How long did it take to get a landing ticket from um, four years? Three years. All right. Well, from, from the, I mean, we've been calling for it for quite some time, mm -hmm. but since the release of the report. Right. But you also had, with the Atlantic ticket, Bill Wheeler also strongly believed in it mm -hmm. and the planning department and advanced it. Um, the planning department right now is really marginalized and so we don't have a whatever you want to call it, uh, on the MTA side um, that is pulling for it. And no one has stepped into Peter's position. Haven't? Yeah, but even when Peter was there it was very hard. Jano's very tied up and so but, but the relevance the, of the MTA. But MTAs. Metro North planning could be the champions of it. It didn't sound that way today no, at didn't. all. No. <laughs> like Schiffer? They, they, have, they have a bunch of proposals in front of them, and ours is one of them. They, they liked ours. Mm -hmm. yeah, they like it. That's but the great. political. Um, but it comes with a whole lot of issues. That, like what they said that, well, it, depending on how this comes about, if it does come about, that. They are going to need more yards. Yeah. The rulings don't have platform mm -hmm. issues. There's a whole gamut of issues that need to be addressed before it could even happen. Well, so I think that the next step for us, right, is to Bradley's going to work on the proof of concept. Yeah. No. I hope that is good with you. Hi, Rich. Was somebody on the so, Let's look at the. We need more rolling stock. Fine. So they have the M3s, which are, are I, I prefer to ride an M3 over an M7 any day, because they're really well maintained and they were rehabbed, which the Morales were not. They mm -hmm. have BTC in them, so they could run for a while. There are no new cars. The M9s will be the M9As. Yeah, the 66 new, 66. those are the M9s. Oh, the right? M9As, they call, yeah. they call them. These are coming online. And so those they're coming online. Be, they're not yeah, even okay. awarded yet. So I mean, we're talking, we don't want to wait until those cars come here. We can't wait until they find somewhere additional yard space. 
it and we have, we have to deal with what we have. But it, it, it sounds as though oh, some of the existing yards have space for expansion, so that, and they're working on that. I don't think that that's, I mean, unless you've heard otherwise, no. the so, constraint, they just didn't order cars in a timely way. And so the, I mean, additional cars, additional yards, but there's an existing capacity that right. could be and that's why used I, right I, now without any exactly. of that stuff. And that's why I kept yeah. hammering in that we're looking at current conditions. We're not looking at prolonging people's trips who are traveling further out, having to make additional stops right. in the cities, just as things as are. Things are. Mm -hmm. there, there is room, but I think that I think the challenge is, is trying to figure out what this is going to look like, like what stations are going to be involved. And I don't, I don't have that same understanding, strictly because it sounds like the... So the, the amount of room you had to start with was very different from Long Island Railroad, which had thousands of, of seats. And when you add in this 125th Street, that it sounds it's like our numbers, change. you're going to have fewer seats. And then they were bringing up that while on yeah, New Haven line, people ride the third seat fine. They don't ride... Oh, they treaded middle no, the Hudson seat. line. Uh -huh. The Hudson, no, the New uh -huh. Haven line, because that's the one I did in my experiences. Okay. Yeah, people take the third seat and they're okay. like, oh, here, go. But not on the Harlem and Hudson line as much. Right. And, and Mike standing or sitting mm -hmm. um, in the middle. And they don't want to be in that position that Long Island is of not collecting tickets, to, with the aisle being blocked up and everything. So these are all things on their mind. And um, so the capacity issue, I think, is is real. And then when it you look at the time savings difference. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that, that's, that's different. That's, um, that's, uh, you had well, huge time savings for a long time. This, this goes back to, and this is just me thinking out loud, is when we were thinking about Atlantic ticket, when there are certain trains, they noted that there's one train that's particularly full, cool, that I don't know how you regulate this or whatever, but maybe we look at these individual trains and see, like, okay, there's 50% room on this train, so this one's mm -hmm. a doable train, and then yeah. you produce a different mm -hmm. schedule, a freedom ticket, measure, whatever you call it, exactly. schedule, mm -hmm. so that customers know that, hey, I can ride this train, that train, but I can't ride this train. If I do well, ride this train, do, I get upcharged. But really, yeah. You know. Well, they have to pay more to ride the train. And they, they, they're, they're going to send us their information, which I think once we have that and we incorporate it in, we'll have a much better idea of how many trains are there that have that capacity. But I didn't, the capacity constraints that, that Mike and his team described today, which were much far beyond anything I've heard from them before, and it really speaks to, they aren't making that case very well to the public or anybody else. Mm. Um, they've never made it for any capital program or 20-year needs assessment. Um, but, you know, between the short platforms and the power supply and all that. We had a great presentation, like when I first started, on the power supply for Metro North, and it's, it's a fascinating presentation mm -hmm. at some point. Um, but, so, um, yeah, I think that... And I think, I don't, I just feel like that gives us, we could, we could voice that, and I think it gives us ammo. It's like, strengthens This is why we ours. need to, yeah, it strengthens mm -hmm. ours, and then it gives us you know, ammo to um, articulate what's needed in the capital program, the 20 more needs. Yeah. Into the capital and, program, and I think it, if yeah, there are five or yeah. six proposals out there, and and all the other ones are trying to inundate the system with a flat fare, you know, with a metro card fare or a discounted fare or whatever, the more we can articulate, no, you've got a capacity problem, and these trains really are going to be over capacity, but it's in the past metro north says that but doesn't back it up with data or information I think that's a spot we could play it is absolutely so it would be good to do the additional research and get the numbers I would add 125th Street right to Grand Central on the exactly. on the outbound and take it away launch well, there not that many people ride from one direction though a yeah. lot of people get on trains at 125th Street they do lots of people you know? Yeah. yeah. What, going into Grand Central? No, no going north. Going north. north. Well, west yeah, north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going south is really not They're that bad. It's sort of negligible, but going north is... Going north is... Yeah, people can't And I would add in Fordham also going north.
now is because of the reverse commute. That's, they brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Stanford, and as part of a destination. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. They to look at. Did they come at all about you know, how the ridership at Ford was doing since now all trains can stop there? Yeah. It's like very problematic. What's problematic about it? What's problematic? What did, I can't remember. They were what? saying, yeah, they were. Uh, People the going in now. Uh, what's the oh, difference? No, a red no. train or a blue train? No, separate. Sorry. Uh, just separate because the, they were just saying the Fordham platform is very, very active. It wasn't pre or post um, this change. It is just, uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear him say, um, um, remarking on yeah. uh, the change. Yeah. Because it was problematic before. It's okay. a narrow because it's a narrow platform. Okay, I he had said I don't think there's any more people uh, riding. The same yeah, people but I, riding I was, there. I was the then I was applying to. Oh, it's been problematic like for a while. What it's done is it's opened all the different colleges and universities for cross pollination in a lot of ways. The ones that are in Westchester and further up, and Fordham can and, and Manhattan can now really work differently together because there's that active transportation system. Yeah, but the fact that, that, but, but that both New Haven line and Harlem line trains can mm -hmm. accept passengers, it's just it should make it easy. It should oh, be, yeah. It should be an easier thing, not more difficult. Right. Maybe because more people, because people know there are more trains. Now, the, those platforms aren't deep and they um, do get very small. spend how much money to fix it. Right. And now, and they they did they <laughs> added a few feet yeah. I think to the depth, but you know that, that area the Bronx is growing and particularly the Fordham area. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, looking looking the at the long term. Of SBS. No, I went to Fordham for, for some summer courses. The third day after you went to get to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we're going to um, continue to work on that report, okay. and your thoughts and input. Yeah, all right. Obviously. All right, so that we yeah. pretty much covered everything. No. No, oh. go ahead. Okay. Uh, I brought it up at the New Jersey Transit meeting. Okay. Our, our county executive has been pushing to get the, the Suffering Train Station mm -hmm. handicapped accessible. Right. Now, New Jersey Transit owns it. So we've, we've been seeing if somehow a deal can be made uh, to switch it over to uh, to the MTA. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Nanuet and uh, uh, Pearl River, Metro North does maintain those stations, mm -hmm. and Metro North also owns Spring Valley. Uh, and we really have to do something because power transit people cannot use uh, Ramsey Route 17. They can't cross the state line. And uh, I've asked the uh, county executive to reissue the letter right. that he had issued a few years ago mm -hmm. about it and, and see what can be done. Also, uh, on the Pacific Valley line, I don't know how many people know about the lawsuit that was put out uh, years ago when, when the mayor of Oradell sued New Jersey Transit and he got the nine communities up the line to join in the lawsuit to stop building two of the passing sidings. Mm -hmm. So we have a tremendous constraint on the Pacific Valley line that you have a 10, uh, 14 mile stretch with 10 station stops. And uh, you can't run rush hour service in both directions because there is no passing sidings. Uh, the golf siding in Oriel will be the critical siding to get built. But we, we need the, the New Jersey Transit to start to think to review the whole thing because the fear that caused that lawsuit to happen has basically mm -hmm. evaporated. And a lot of the uh, communities uh, that were uh, part of the lawsuit aren't anymore, you know, and they, they, they see the advantage of, of improved train service. So what we're, we're, we're trying to say is it's time to, to relook the whole thing. Now, m money was also given to Metro North as part of the operating agreement to New Jersey Transit to build those passing signings, the two that weren't built, and they were refunded to Metro North. And the idea there was that uh, there would be no prejudice should, should at some time in the future uh, they want to go ahead with the passing side, uh, they could do it. And it's, it's, it's really a big factor to see if we can, if we can do something. Because you can't get a, a, a train into Rockland County on the Pascal County line before 10 o'clock in the morning. And that's because we don't have those passing sightings. So it's, it's something to think of. And I've also asked, uh, and I'm going to follow up with our uh, county executive, he was 
to reissue that letter to uh, you know the new people because you know it was it was three years old and see what we can do to get some of this done. Right. The stuff one would be great. That would be we're gonna call it the Orange Get Station. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I don't know why they, 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 they if there's a problem with getting the accessible vehicles into New Jersey, why they can't get some kind of a waiver? I mean, there would need to be an interstate commerce waiver. Well, and, you know, interstate and transportation waiver. There probably need to be is, different is, training and vehicle types. But, but there's also something here. Also, is as uh, they want a transit-oriented development, and Suffern is very interested in in having transit-oriented development there. So it's important to fix up that station. It's, it's, it's uh, people, a lot of women don't like to use that station at night. It spooks them. Sure. And, and something has to be done. And it just, it, 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 it's long overdue. Well, we can um, certainly, you know, obviously we you know, would support that county executive's letter if um, he wants to issue the letter and do a press conference. Um, that's, a, you know, we can. That was um, participating. The letter was yeah, the other right element up was maybe. with Suffern's TOD that was built there, which was done really nicely. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's too small in scale to really pay in and help the station. But there was some thought of if Suffern has done a master plan that incorporated it, that's another trigger mm -hmm. for Metro North to engage more on this. Um, and so, um, if the town or the mayor was to get village. engaged, the, the village, village, okay, uh, was to get engaged, and if they um, somewhat recently created a well, they they built a plan. whole new apartment complex right, right. near the station. Was they have reach out and to, so, to the village and find yeah, out? And so, finding out, <clears> of, uh, yeah, where, like when's the last time they did a master plan, and did they incorporate? Uh, you know, greater access to the train station and sure. making that a feature. All of those things um, do encourage Metro North to to get in the game. Well, the good thing is in in, in Rockland County is that uh, the uh, uh, person who's in charge of public transportation, Doug Schutz, is also in the planning department. Right. Is oh, Patrick Gurdon okay. still there? Patrick Gurdon yeah. is still there too. Yeah. Uh, but so. They so that's something they can. So Patrick, you know, sits at the intake table. Right, I know that. And yeah. I can, I can get put in. I my mean, people should they push hard enough for it that to get into the next tip. But there has to be a New Jersey Transit. Fine. Well, the tip is just being issued now, but into yeah, there has to there has to be an you know, agreement of some kind. There. Right. Well, you see, the, what I what I said yesterday at the meeting was. It's to New Jersey Transit's benefit to turn the station over to the MTA mm -hmm. because they have to maintain it. They have a, if somebody stubs their toe on the platform, mm -hmm. they have a lawsuit against right. it. And they need money. And they need money. That, that may be why the MTA doesn't want it. Well, but but there's, so there's a whole big thing though in Rockland so. County that Rockland County gets shortchanged mm -hmm. by the MTA to forty yeah. million dollars, and right. it would start to move on that one, you know. And so it, it, it would solve a lot of issues. It would, it would show that they're really doing more for Rockland County, mm -hmm. you know. And right now, of course, uh, the other thing, like Randy brought up, was that the fact is 